Hello friends, this is Sandra Brown of Life Pushing 80, because that's what I'm doing, Pushing 80. So, as promised, I've got to have updates on what's been going on with me. And right now I'm in um, Tennessee, Crossville, Tennessee. And as you guessed, I'm married now. I was married July uh, 19th here in Tennessee and by an assistant pastor. Yes, okay, so first of all, before I get into the story, um, I would I'd like to ask for you to please subscribe. I was packing everything to come from Indiana to come here to Tennessee and I um, think I forgot my microphones. So I'll try to speak up. I'm not used to speaking loud, but I'm gonna try it. And uh, anyways, subscribe please and hit like. And thank you, I got to 9,000 subscribers in about three months. And I couldn't have done it without you. I mean, it wasn't me, you're the ones that subscribed. So thank you so very much. And, and uh, everyone's been exceptionally kind and sweet and, and I do appreciate all of you. Okay, so, well, as you know, I was married, I told before, for 40 years. 20 years prior to that, I was married. My husband had a drinking problem and we divorced and I remarried immediately. Married for 40 years and uh, uh, we loved each other, but the marriage was rough. And, but it had its good times too, you know. But uh, it was a little volatile, I'll put it that way. <laughs> so anyways, my husband, my second husband, came down with Alzheimer's. So it was about two and a half, three years that I took care of him. And um, it, it's so, the period of time, he, he passed away January 13th. So I think I said 14th in one of the other videos accidentally, but it's a 13th. And actually it feels like you've been widowed a lot longer when you take care of somebody with Alzheimer's because it's not like they're a husband anymore, you know, so just seems like I've been alone for a very long time, especially with him being in the nursing home. I was alone. So when Larry passed, uh, I was lonely. And uh, it isn't that it's just a man. I just like companionship. I like to share life experiences and just share the, the home and the decorating of the home and going on vacations. And, have someone to have a meal with. I, I, I love all of that. And I do love making somebody else happy. <coughs> oh, no, no, Millie. I'm sorry. My, in Tennessee, there's a lot of chipmunks and squirrels and I got Millie with me. No, no. So, anyways, I went on Zeusk dating site and um, I, I put it very clearly what I wanted. I wanted a Christian man, somebody would, you know, go to church with me, read the Bible with me, someone who's already living a Christian life, not someone who's going to suddenly become this great Christian because he's seen me and maybe likes my profile, okay? So, I, w I went on match and Let's see, I could go through some of the guys uh, quickly that I met, oh, you might be interested, but I met one man named Tony and we talked on the phone uh, maybe two or three times, but um, he was supposed to call me one time and it, he was late calling me. And I don't like that, I'm very much on time, but he said that he fell asleep or something like that. So. And then he was very deeply into yoga. I, I don't, I don't know how I feel about yoga. I'm just as a Christian, I don't know. So he was a little too deep in it, and we kind of didn't agree on that. And then we just quit talking. 
Then I met another Tony, <laughs> Tony number two. And um, he had dated maybe about 10 different women. And then he met me and he was like, I'm the one, just like that. Well, I hadn't, he was the first man I really saw. And you know, so I just didn't feel that was quite, so the second date, you know, I told him, no, I can't go on these trips with you. I'm a Christian, I'm not sleeping with you. And of course he said he would get a room, you know, my own room and stuff like that. Well, that's very expensive, especially if you're going on a cruise or something. And so on the second date, I told him we had to cool the affection because, you know, I like the hugging and kissing, but you know, you have to have a, a place where you, you know, I don't know. It was just, that had to stop and I'm not, and I did not want to go on these vacations with him. First of all, I didn't know him that well. Things were going a little bit too fast, but he was a very nice gentleman. Had a nice big black Cadillac and a very nice home. Okay, so when I told him that on the second date, right after that, he wanted to go home. So thought that was it, but we continued talking. More on him later. Okay, then I met another man, Stan. He was a pilot. Um, we talked on the phone twice and did some texting back and forth, but uh, every time he got back with me and, and wanted to go, go out with me, I was going with somebody else. So we never really made the connection. And then there was another man from Indianapolis who I never actually met, but we talked on the phone, but he was already getting really serious and singing me songs. And, and I just had to break that off too. And then I met another man who lived close by because that's what I wanted. I wanted someone close by. Actually, I wanted somebody to go to church with and go to breakfast with afterwards because Sundays were very lonely. And I met this man who was close to me as another man. And then when I seen him, there was no sparks. So then I had to, I, I told him that, that I wasn't feeling it and I was very nice about it. And I didn't see him again. And then there was another man who lived right in my town. He was an ex police officer and uh, um, we, we talked to the phone and he, you know, really clicked and stuff. Well, at least on his side. I, and he was talking about going to the church I was going to. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not ready to take anybody to the church, you know. And, uh, you know, because this was my church. And if I brought somebody there, they're like thinking it's serious. So anyways, but in the meantime, I've got... I, I was flipping through on on Zeus and I did see this one man, but I was like looking for somebody a little bit younger than me. You know, not a lot, but maybe 75, you know. And but I, I was flipping through and I seen this one man's pictures. He was sitting in a restaurant his hair was white, but I liked his smile but I just flicked by it because it said he's from Tennessee. I'm like, that's too far. So then I just didn't, I never visited it or looked at his profile or anything. In fact, at that time, I guess he didn't have one and I didn't care because he's too far. So then I got a message from him, but I had a lot of messages on there. So I, I don't know how soon I looked at it, but I read it and he said, uh, did you read my profile? And he said, it sounds like we're a perfect match. So I did go look at his profile and wow, yeah, we were a perfect match. I go, but I told him, I go, yeah, it sounds like we are, but you're just too far away. So, cause it would be like seven or eight hours from my house to Tennessee where I'm at now, but, I'm on his, his or our deck now, 
trying to get used to the hour thing. Of course, we've, we've both been on our own. But, um, so anyways, he wrote back and he said, love conquers all. Well, I've kind of heard that before and stuff, but then we begin, we were messaging a little bit back and forth on Zeus, then we begin chatting on, uh, just text, texting back and forth. Okay, so, so then we began talking on the phone and he was the sweetest man. Yeah, I, I really did like him, but he's too far away, you know. But uh, someone had said that an online, you're just talking on the phone and texting, can become very intense, and it really is. Because it's nothing about physical. You're just, just mentally, you're, you know, mentally, you're really getting to know each other. And that's very important. And his profile was just perfect. He was so much like me. And his wife had passed from COVID. And he was with her for a long time up in the hospital. And um, he's had training, so he was almost the sole caregiver of her and was the one who actually pronounced her dead when she passed away. And uh, so he was, he's a caregiver and his name is Bill. <laughs> My first husband's name was Bill, so. So, but, and he's not a drinker, he's not a smoker. He goes, he's already very involved in a church and right at this moment while I'm making this video, he's at a men's breakfast at the church. Um, he is one of these guys in the neighborhood that does something for everybody. Uh, he was a retired, I, I think I told it in the one video I took down, okay. He was a, a retired police lieutenant from Cook County and then when he retired from there, he was a fireman for 19 years. Um, he's an author, his, his first book is about ready to be published and is historical uh, fiction book. And he also was a broker, real estate broker. He was also a stock broker at one time. He just, he's had this amazing career also worked for an airline, Alaskan airline it was. And then he quit from there and went on to the fire department, which was his last job. And the fire department is what he really enjoyed. He loved that, that was his favorite job. And he calls me baby girl. I love that. And when we were on the phone all that time, he was always sending me songs, different songs like Lady and we just have an array of songs now that Alexa plays. So we, we say, Alexa, play our favorites, and we listen to all our songs, and we dance in the kitchen and the living room all the time. We laugh a lot. We go to church together. He prays with me. And in the morning, he, he go, I see him, he goes out on the deck, and he's got his hands raised, praising the Lord. He's done that every morning. And then he comes in, he'll read the Bible to me. Actually, we're reading a Smith Wigglesworth book. It's a funny name, but a great book. But he'll read that to me. And we pray together. He just prayed for me before he left just now for my video. Oh, I hope I'm speaking up. I keep forgetting to do that without my mic. But, okay, now I'm getting off here. I got how we met. Okay, so I flipped through. All right, so I couldn't really, all right, so he did come to town. Bill did come to town. And he was supposed to be here for three days. Well, he came to my house and it's so different when you really see somebody. It's just so different. And it scared me kind of, I don't know what it was. I just, it's like I, did, I didn't want to see him the next day. I thought, oh, he's gonna be here three days. I really don't want to see him. And I don't know if he sensed it, but we did talk, we've not really talked about it. 
he went home to his sisters and then he just got up real early in the morning and headed back for Tennessee. And I was so thankful because I pray to go, God, I just pray. He does, I don't want to see him again. I just pray he goes back. So I never questioned him why he went back because I was glad he did. But yet we kept talking because we were such good. That's where we got along really good. I mean, just that's where we, we made connection was texting and being on the phone. Okay, so let's see what happened then. Uh, I don't know. <sighs> then it ended up, we're on the phone again. Now things are good again. Now we decided that we're gonna get married. But he, he was gonna come up here and So he, since we're going to get married, he's going to bring a lot of clothes, right? Now I mentioned it to family about that he was going to get married, and pretty soon they were kind enough to offer this outdoor beautiful wedding. Long story that, but I was wearing a boho dress and short cowboy boots, and he was wearing cowboy boots and a hat. And uh, it was just going to be a great, great wedding. But I was getting a little nervous about this. Like, I don't really know him, you know. I mean, I know him, but just, just physically to see somebody. And then he came up. And he was all fine and good. He was all ready. But he brought a lot of clothes. And he start putting them in the closet, and I'm like, and I had a guest room in my own room, and he slept in the guest room. And when I went to bed that night, I'm laying in bed thinking, what am I doing? I even had the, the, a friend of mine who was going to marry us, and and he said to me, Sandy, if you change your mind, then it's better to do it now than to after you're married and try to get out of it. And then that kept bouncing around in my head, you know. And I'm like, what am I doing? This is all getting so big. And, and, and then all of a sudden, we're, a lot of people are coming to this wedding. Photographers and food and like, oh, uh, I don't know what was wrong with me, but I got terrified. And he got up the next morning and we had coffee and I'm getting quiet. When I get quiet, that's not good. And I was getting kind of quiet and... And I said, I think I just said, I'm getting cold feet. And he, he goes, oh, no, no, don't tell me this. I, I can't believe this. And, oh, this is not good. And I'm feeling horrible about it, but I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I'm not speaking up. Okay, so anyways, I had to help him to take all his stuff out and he's, but we did, kissed and hugged him goodbye and he drove back to Tennessee. And after telling all his friends, he's getting married, his sister was gonna be involved in the wedding and so was my sister. So from that point, I didn't know what was going to happen. Didn't want to totally lose him, but I didn't want to marry him. So, crazy thing that happened. The minute he pulls out of my driveway, Tony, number two, Tony called and he said, well, he texted, he says, are you married? And I said, well, no. As a matter of fact, he's just pulling out of the driveway, going back to Tennessee. I go, I just got cold feet. And so, make a long story short, he said, so he'd ha to my house, he'd have to drive probably about 50 miles. And he says, how about I come over and we'll order a pizza? And I go, are you serious? And he goes, 
He goes, yeah. He goes, let's have, have a pizza and talk or something. Like, so finally, after a while, like, he convinced me, and I says, okay. So he came over and we had pizza, and it was so comfortable because this wasn't marriage, you know. And and I like Tony. I'm I'm comfortable with him. And uh, then he called the next day and said. Hey, he had went out with another lady. By now, he's dated like 20-some women, and he can't find anybody. And he called and goes, Sandy, I just went up to pick some barbecue stuff up, and I was sitting in the car, and I thought, what am I doing? The only lady I've had any connection with is that little blonde in Crown Point, which is me. <laughs> and, uh, of course, I liked hair and that, you know? as a woman, and uh, then he wanted me to come to his house and he was gonna have a barbecue. Well, he's got a very nice, large house, very nice. And uh, we went there and had a nice cookout. It all went real smooth. Then it was the kissy huggy, but don't worry, nothing happened, but kissy huggy, and I'm like, like and I mean, all oh, that was good. I enjoyed it, but then, I got home, and I'm like, what am I doing? He's not anybody I'm gonna marry, and he doesn't wanna marry anybody. He just want, he was asking me, he asked me if I would be his girlfriend. I go, what does that mean? Well, not to date anybody else. And I said, well, just be there for me, and blah, 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 and travel, and all that. And I go, I go, well, Bill's coming in town in July for a memorial. I'm I'm going to see him. I'm not breaking that off. So he agreed to that, you know. But I didn't agree yet about being his girlfriend. And I didn't know what I wanted. But then I got home the next day. I'm like, what am I doing? Bill is everything I want. I just haven't had any time with him. That was our whole problem. We had not had any time together. So, the thought just come to me. Why don't I call him and ask him to pick me up and let's spend some time together. Let's go someplace. And so, I I, uh, I don't know if we text or what we did. I go, what do you think about us spending some time together? Away from here. I just need to get away from my house. And he goes, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> and uh, so he came and he picked me up. And I wouldn't blame him if he didn't, but he did. And he never gives up. <laughs> he made a piece of mind he's going to marry me. And uh, so we went on the way back, on the way to his home in Tennessee. We stopped at the Creation Museum. I haven't been there before. He had, but I had. And then... Um, then he took me to the Ark. I hadn't been there before. And uh, then we drove through the like back roads of Kentucky on the way to his house. It was just beautiful. Just, just rolling hills and just gorgeous scenery in the mountains. And so, and we talked. We did a lot of talking. And I told him what happened like about with Tony and him coming there because I wanted to be all honest and everything out there because I felt guilty about that that I seen you know breaking his heart and just seeing somebody like that oh god I'm sorry about that <laughs> I can't seem to get that to hang up on there <laughs> I hope I can learn to cut that out <laughs> It's still recording, okay. All right, where did, I, where did I leave off? All right, so, okay. So we, were, we then we, we got to his house and and we had separate rooms because he had a guest room. And and yeah, it was, we were getting along really good by then. And I don't know how long I was there, maybe two days, something like that. And then, find, and he, he's just trying not to ask me to marry him. You know, he's trying to just be dating for dating, you know. And 
And finally, I, th I wanted to make sure this time I would, if I was going to do this, I really was going to do it. And so then I said to him, okay, I will. And he goes, you will what? And I go, I'll, I'll marry you. And he goes, you will? <laughs> he was like, <laughs> like, he was so excited. He goes, oh, you will? You mean it? <laughs> I said, yes, I'll marry you. And uh, so he was so, so excited. And uh, he was on this exercise machine <laughs> that evening and playing our love songs. And he was singing to me. <laughs> I still got the video. It's so cute. He was singing to me all our love songs and stuff. And then we went and got, we got the ring, which is another story. Ended up, I think I'm running, I'm gonna be, this is gonna get too long. I might have to tell the rest of the story later, but now what we're doing is we, uh, you know, we got married here in Tennessee and then we drove back to my house in Indiana and now we had to get my house ready because we're gonna sell it. So we got we got my house ready, which is a lot of work. And uh, you know it is because like, I just had so much paintings, all those paintings, what do you do about that? So, and we had to haul all those over to my granddaughter's house. And, and uh, now we got the house on the market and we're having a lot of showings and I'm looking for an offer very soon because I know of one that's coming in. And um, so when the house sells, then uh, we're moving back where I'm at right now in, in Tennessee for a while because we're getting this house ready, his house ready, and we're gonna be selling his house and we're gonna be moving to Florida. Reason being is because my sister is selling her house. She's a young sibling I have left. We're very close. She's a younger sister. And uh, she's moving to Florida because her son, daughter-in-law, and her three grandchildren moved there. And she's very close to them. And uh, so that's why she's moving there. Um, actually, nobody really comes to see me. I mean, I have grandchildren, but they've got their own lives in Indiana. and. You know, when you live in Florida and, and you have family in Indiana, when it gets cold weather, they come and visit you. So that's probably what will happen. And uh, so it'll be nice. And so that's our goal right now. And I know this is getting kind of long. And uh, oh, I got a little bit of time to read you. This is in, G this came out of the um, Andrew Womack book. And it's, it's titled, Resist the Devil. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You must recognize that some things are from God, and some things are from the devil. Satan is not God's messenger boy. This mental image that the devil is on a leash, and God only lets him go so far, isn't true. You are the one who allows Satan to come in. Your adversary, now this is in 1 Peter 5, 8. Your adversary, the devil, a as a roaring lion. He's not one, but as a roaring lion. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. May, if, that is if you let him. Satan cannot devour everybody. He can't do things to you without your consent and cooperation. One of the things that turns the devil loose in your life is the attitude that things can't happen unless God's unless it's God's will. This thinking leads you to believe that you can't really fight against it. James 4, 7 tells us to resist the devil. It tells us to resist him. Resist means to actively fight against. You cannot actively fight against something if you think God has ordained or permitted it. He's not the one who permits these things. That's something to think about. Sometimes I think, and I know it, the Bible says it will have trials down here. So I'm not talking about the trials. Sometimes Saint, Satan just does come against us and we just roll over and take it. But the Bible says to resist him. Yes. So God bless all of you and resist the devil. And I believe 
my marriage is just is from God. I I didn't recognize it at first, and 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 Bill realizes now too that 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 was too fast. You know, he he kind of pushed me into it, but uh, I'm glad now that he didn't give up because. He's a wonderful man. Does the dishes? I haven't done a dish. He let me. He paid for me to get my nails done. That chip proof lasts forever. He opens a car door for me. He just he does. He does everything, and and I do everything for him. So it's kind of it's very mutual, and I just love his heart. Yeah, he's about a year older than me. Okay, guys. So this is really long. Okay. I promised you this. I, I'm not. I should have wrote more down. I'm. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Bye, friends. Love ya.